All right, Brian, I, I want to move on to something that, uh, well, we promised to the audience a while back, and uh, we're now delivering. Do you like your ISP? <laughs> uh, I don't really have a choice, do I? <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's another discussion. We're not going to get into that, but yeah, yeah mm. most of us hate our ISPs. Yeah, I, I think I would fall into that category. Fortunately, I haven't had to deal with Comcast is my ISP right now, um, so that actually has worked out for me. As soon as I have to deal with them, though, I, I hate everything. What is the most, and this is not just for your ISP, the most frustrating thing that you can have as a tech person hmm. when you're trying to fix a problem? <laughs> when you're trying to fix a yeah. problem? Uh, phew, I don't know. What, what, uh, I'd say it's... Figure. It's the intermittent problem, right? Oh, it's, you, where you, you, can't, you can't pinpoint it. Can't pinpoint it. And, yes. and like the tech comes over and it's like, well, it wasn't working 10 minutes ago. Right. Fix oh, it. I know exactly. Well. Yeah, that right? happens to me all the time where like uh, I'll be playing a game and then all of a sudden I'll get a lag spike. And then I'll go on my laptop and I'll do you know a speed test and it's fine. Everything looks fine it here. It checks sir. out. I don't yeah. know what's wrong with your equipment, mm -hmm. right? Well, and then they try and get me to change my modem. Is what exactly. They and and actually that's that's the part that I really hate. It's it's saying okay, well every day between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. <laughs> my yep. connection goes down. I know. I actually that. That has been happening to me. Yep. I, I stay up a little later than I should, but at exactly 12.30 every night, <laughs> I'm watching something on Chromecast, oh, and it just right? cuts out. It's fantastic. And, and then it picks up like five minutes later. It happens like three times, four times a week. And if you call up your ISP, they're going to tell you, oh, well, everything looks fine on our side. All of our equipment says it was green, yeah, so it must be sure. something wrong with your network. Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice, Brian, if you had a way to easily and freely, so uh -huh. it's not going to cost you anything, to document exactly what's going on. And then I would be able to use that information to shame them. To shame them, or even, <laughs> I mean, or to give to like a technician right, and say, to help Look, them, yeah, sure. This, I'm not imagining this, this is what I saw. <laughs> I swear I'm not a crazy person. Well, You're driving me crazy. Let's not go that far. But wouldn't that be nice? I mean, something that you could do easily, something that everyone could do, no matter what your operating system might be, and something that you could do now. I have a feeling you're about to show us. I am. Hey, Alex. Press the magic button. Documenting your bad connection starts with getting some basic information about your network. These instructions are for Windows users, but Mac users should be able to follow along using Shell. And Linux users, well, you already know how to do all this, so I'm going to give you all a gold star and ask you to sit outside. Open up a command prompt and use the command ipconfig to bring up your IP address information. You can also use ipconfig slash all for a more complete inventory of your IP networking configuration. Document your IPv4 address and your default gateway. In my case, the client resides at 192.168.0.15, and my gateway is at 192.168.0.1. This gives me my first hop on the network, meaning that my client is one step away from my gateway. If you want to speed up the process, create a shortcut for the command prompt to make it easier to open up multiple command windows. Open up a new command window and ping your default gateway. In my case, I type ping 192.168.0.1 space dash T. The dash T switch turns this into a continual ping request to the gateway, your first hop. As each ping gets back to your client, you get your ping time. Since this is your gateway, the ping time should be extremely low. Typically 1 to 2 milliseconds for a wired network, sub 15 milliseconds for a wireless network. If it goes higher than that for an extended period of time, you may have issues with your internal network. This gateway address is good to have, but if it starts with 192.168, then it's a non-routable address, and we want the first hop past your internal network. This will require you to get into the interface for the device supplied by your ISP. In my case, it's a Cisco DPC3825 DOCSIS 3.0 gateway. Upon entering the interface, I can find the default gateway of my router. This is the first hop for my router, which means I now have a path from my client to my router to the first point of contact with my ISP. Again, document everything. More experienced users will tell you to use Traceroute, but I'm going to give them a gold star and tell them to go sit outside with the Linux guys. With this new information, open up a new command window and start a continual ping of your router's default gateway. In my case, it's 24.253.19.1. As the window populates, you'll start to see ping times to that second hop that you can compare against times to the first hop. That's important because it means that you know how long it takes to get to the end of your network and to the edge of theirs. Typically, I like to have a third or fourth ping running to a popular service on the internet. 
something like Google at 74.125.228.110, or to open DNS at 208.67.220.220. Accessing those services will take you through your ISP's network to a handoff with another network. Once you've got your pings running, you can start looking for patterns and increased latency. I've taken screenshots and screen caps that I can show to my ISP tech when he doubts that I'm having a problem with their network. In this example, pings to my internal gateway average 1 millisecond, to the ISP's edge takes 7 to 14 milliseconds, and to Google takes 56 milliseconds. That's actually average. What I want to look for is when I can still get to my internal gateway and to the edge, but not to an external service, or when that external service takes an extraordinary amount of time, something past 1,000 milliseconds or more. That's when you know that the problem is past your network. This doesn't always guarantee action, but at the very least you can shame them by posting their atrocious pings onto the internet.